Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about axe handles today, and uh, and this applies not just to axe handles, but to hammer handles or a hatchet handle or <clears throat> whatever you might be working with. So, real basic video, picking out a, a replacement uh, axe handle. Um, first thing you want to look at, this is a uh, actually one I just picked up at Lowe's. Uh, it's going to be used for a Pickaroon project that I'm going to work on, but uh, basically you're looking for any kind of defect in the handle. This one looks pretty good. We have a little knot here, uh, but won't really cause any kind of issue, I don't believe. Um, especially for a pickaroon, it's a fairly lightweight tool. Uh, and if anybody doesn't, or if people don't know what a pickaroon is, this is actually a pickaroon head. Uh, you can see it there. So I'll be restoring this one. This was a, an old one my grandfather had. And uh, it was actually used as a garden digger by someone. He probably found it at a yard sale or a flea market. And uh, anyway, I'll be restoring that later. But when you, when you get the handle, you want to make sure that the uh, grain is good. Uh, of course, most handles are made, a, made out of hickory. I'd recommend an American-made handle if possible. Of course, even overseas, they usually use American hickory. Um, and <clears throat> when you're picking it out, one of the main things to look at is grain structure. So if we look at the grain orientation uh, of this handle, I'd consider it almost perfect. Um, so we want the grain running from top to bottom. So that puts the load in their correct orientation with the grain. If it's 90 degrees from that, it makes the it makes the handle very weak because all the strength is in the grain and the direction that it runs. So you can see that this grain is is uh, pretty much perfect from top to bottom. What's not good is this handle. As you can see, this grain runs horizontally, not vertically. So it's running across the handle, and you can see this odd looking. Uh, pattern here that's because that's how it's uh, the grain set up when they they cut it or turned it so uh, not a good not a good setup this is very weak and uh, as you can see this has actually been broken um, it lasted for a while but this was uh, uh, I believe a Chinese or a imported handle and uh, just not made very well but it lasted a couple years it was actually in this mall you see on the table splitting mall so that splitting mall has had a new uh, American-made hickory handle installed in it. Let's look at the grain on that one. As you can see there, that it's it's basically running about 20 degrees from from vertical. So that's not bad. Um, and I've had this for a while now in in this mall, and it's worked very very well. Uh, notice that it fits nice and tightly here and uh, notice the wedge at the top so <clears throat> works works well hasn't come loose so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that 10 bucks at the big box store starts with an L um, here's the new handle I got now I want to talk about something else real quick the other thing when you go to pick out a handle make sure this cut is centered on the handle if you look at some some of the uh, handles in the store this cut will actually be really offset over here on the side and that's not good you want that to be even even force into the uh, hammer or axe or maul or whatever head that you can get so that when you drive the wedge into that groove that it holds nice and tightly so later on I'll be showing you how to put that handle into this uh, pick a room that we're working on and <clears throat> and talk about that the other thing real quick most of these handles have a, a finish on them and uh, you want to probably sand that off especially if you have softer hands I have quite a bit of calluses on my hands so it really doesn't bother me too bad and I usually wear gloves when when swinging them but it's good to go ahead and sand that off there and then if you can get it all the way down to the wood, then put some like a boiled linseed oil or something like that on there to, to keep it keep it in good shape. 
while we're talking about that, let's go over here and look at this. This is a pre premium handle on a Grandsforth Brook uh, small forest axe. Um, just in case anybody is interested, this has got the initials AS on it. But this is the small forest axe that a lot of people talk about. It's used by a lot of survivalists. It's a it's a quite a short axe. It's it comes to about my uh, just past my elbow because I'm I'm a pretty big guy. So, uh, but anyway, if we look at the grain structure on this hatchet or axe, um, notice it's pretty much perfect and uh, running from top to bottom. Also notice there's no finish on this other than just a, an oil that they've put on and uh, very nice in the hand. Um, maybe a little bit small in diameter for my hands, but I have big hands, so, but it serves its purpose. Um, also notice that they've, they've actually got the wood wedge and they've driven a steel wedge in there as well to secure it. So nice, good example of a nice high quality some consider maybe the the pinnacle of of axes or manufacturers so you can see what they're using in their handles so and then the other thing here on the table is also a uh, Husqvarna uh, forest axe I really like this axe uh, it's more suited to my size uh, and significantly cheaper than the Grand Forest Brook um, let's look at the grain structure real quick on that so running about 20 degree angle like on my mall I've used this quite a bit, very, very strong, no issues. Um, there's some slight nodding or whatever there, but very, very minimal effect on the handle. So uh, I guess that's it. So leave your comments, please subscribe, and uh, thanks for joining me for another Project King video.